because uh, then things get bad for us. Um, we're coordinating that with water removal. Uh, we do have some water that's entering the ship from a location that we're not sure of, uh, but uh, we've got local divers on scene. They're going to try to figure out how the water is getting into the ship so that we're not having to remove the water. We're being very careful not to apply our, our fire streams into the hole so that we don't have to pull it out. So that's kind of our number one goal, keep the ship upright, keep the fire at bay, um, and keep the hole intact because all the fires burn, it's trying to burn a hole through that. So we're just uh, uh, taking a uh, cautious approach. We're trying to limit the number of people that go on board, uh, and that's what we've been doing most of the day. So it's a combination of what I just said. Uh, we do have some water that was applied earlier that has uh, pooled. And uh, what we're trying to do is figure out if there's uh, water coming from the bottom of the ship. So until we get all that diagnosed, we get the divers underneath to take a real look at it. We'd be speculating where the water's coming from and why it's listing so much. Well. Um, we're taking a cautious approach, as I said before. I know that's not an answer, uh, but uh, it's leaning more than we want it to. We're trying to rectify that problem, and we're ever vigilant that if it does, we've got contingency plans in place. Uh, and our number one concern is keep the fuel in the tank. And I know uh, starting tomorrow, we're going to start the process of getting the, the fuel that we can out of the tanks to reduce that uh, potential. The goal is to start some of that tomorrow. We've got our fire department, fire investigators. Uh, there's a list of federal agencies, NTSB, and a, and a number of others. We've got state inspectors, Coast Guard inspectors. So that list is long, and we actually haven't even got our arms around what that will look like. The goal is to have a big stabilization period over the night, a watch and see approach. And uh, tomorrow will be another day, and we will should have some more concrete answers than the one I just gave you. Well, let's start from a ship-based approach and kind of go out into the community. Um, we do know there's been uh, some people complaining about smoke up on the hill. Uh, we're trying to monitor that on a regular basis. That's Northeast Tacoma, Browns Point, Dash Point, and King County. Um, our smoke plume is small now, smaller, and uh, we're trying to pay attention to the monitors that are uh, around the area. We've got fixed monitors and we've got some uh, uh, other monitoring systems that are giving that data to us. Uh, we're regulating it. The air quality, you know, spikes and then it then it drops off. So we're being mindful of that. We have had complaints and uh, on some of your newscasts, people that are concerned about what they're breathing. So we're trying to give the answers that they need. Um, we've we've rescinded the shelter in place order um, because the data shows us that uh, there's not that big of an emergency currently but that can change at a moment's notice. So we want people to be vigilant and we're paying attention to the monitoring. So we've got booms around the ship. We've got our local monitoring for our hazmat teams that we're monitoring the air for the rescuers and we've got our protective equipment. And then we're working with our partners, tribal, uh, local agencies to make sure that uh, we've got a communication path for anything that uh, they're concerned about. Well, as stated earlier, uh, we haven't had any, you know, significant amount of anything in the water, fuel, other chemicals. So uh, that triple boom effect is is our first line of defense uh, for anything that might get outside the ship. Uh, but as far as uh, um, stuff inside, we're prepared. Um, we actually just sent our hazmat team back. They're on a come as necessary basis because we're pretty content that nothing's going to get out of the ship anytime soon, minus a fire starting or something catastrophic happening. Um, well, we, we did have, during the uh, initial tactical phase of the incident, we had four firefighters that were injured. Um, that's probably old news by now. Um, uh, we had some 
uh, carbon monoxide, you know, from breathing smoke, it, whether it be away from the incident or not. Um, we had uh, a broken ankle uh, during the firefight. Um, we had uh, a couple heat-related injuries because of the intensity of the fire that we were fighting. So that's that was uh, on Sunday. No, that was Saturday um, when things were at their peak. And right now, you see there's nobody really on the boat right now other than a demolition company putting pumps in place. So we're trying to limit our footprint on the vessel itself. And we have a hot zone around the vessel because it's leaning. So we're trying to keep a, a, you know, a margin of uh, safety for our crews. Chief, what's making this so challenging to put out? Well, I'm going to quote myself from uh, a little bit ago. Just like the building next to us, it's got a roof on it. The ship's got its bottom. It's meant to keep water out. So unless we can actually go in and put water on the fire, we're, we're spraying water into protected areas. So it's really hard to make access to that. Um, some suggestions were to cut the hole and spray water in from the outside. We don't want to damage the hole. That's what's keeping us in a, in a good spot right now. So um, it's just very difficult on any marine fire to get in and actually find all the different compartments that might be involved. And we're using our thermal imaging cameras from outside and that's kind of telling us generally where they are. And then uh, just recently we saw that the hole uh, is in certain areas is reaching temperatures of up to 700 degrees. So we're focusing our water application in those areas to keep that hole intact. This isn't a wildfire, just like I said. So this rain, just like our hose streams, aren't hitting fire. They're just cooling heat, cooling the hole. Um, there were some requests to put people inside and go into those tight areas in a ship and fight fire. And that's we did that on the initial stage of that when it seemed tenable. Right now, it's not worth the risk to put firefighters' lives in danger uh, for something we don't know how to go take care of immediately. We don't know what's going on in there. No more? All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Can we get them um, closer where they could take some better For sure. Shots? For sure. Okay. We might have to wait about 10 minutes or we'll, we might just have to skip that just because we, we're live at 4. Okay. Okay. Well, I can take the rest of the uh, But thank you. This, is not, this might be mine. You guys have cards for our We have to go live at 4.